this story I wrote in April of this year, 2020. It's called Door. Benjamin knew it was the house, and he knew that the door was the heart of the house. From the time he was 14, he'd go down into the cellar and stare at that door, that door built of massive steel bars, impenetrable, fire-hardened, soul-sucking bars. What would it be like to be imprisoned back there behind those bars, back in the dank stone hallway? And what was at the end of that hallway? Did it even have an end? The hallway receded into the darkness, but if he brought a flashlight, he could see down to the place where it took a hard right turn. Sometimes if he turned off the flashlight and waited until his eyes got used to the darkness of the cellar, he'd imagine he could see a faint glow coming from that passage on the right. Sometimes he'd imagine that he heard sounds, soft sounds, echoing down that dreary hallway, a shiver of chains, a low moan, a slight silent exhalation. By the time he was 16, he began to fear that the door may one day be opened. What would happen? What unspeakable horror would be released upon the earth if some force was able to swing open that door on its massive hinges? Every time his father tried something new to open that door, it filled Benjamin with a cold fright. And his father tried everything. He'd ruined dozens of hacksaw blades with nary a scratch to the bars. And no matter how big a pry bar he used, the hinges would not break free. Was it six or seven locksmiths that all tried and failed to move those ancient tumblers, even though his father had cleaned and oiled the lock many times over the years? With time, Benjamin grew apart from the house. He finished his education, met the love of his life, married, and had a child who they named Adam. The house and the door faded into the background of his adult life. And then there came that terrible accident, and his parents were gone. After a flurry of arrangements, family visitations, and legal paperwork, Benjamin finally realized that the house was his responsibility now, and with the house, that door... His young family decided to move into the house, and immediately Benjamin knew it was a mistake. His old obsession returned. Eventually, it became so all-consuming that his young wife decided that they needed some time apart. She moved back in with her mother and took young Adam with her. "'You need to sort this out if you ever want us to come back,' she said as they were packing up the car." But if the obsession had gripped Benjamin before, now, alone in the house, it grew to massive proportions. He would lie awake at night, listening. Was that the creak of a hinge, a low cry? <laughs> Slow, sliding footsteps coming from deep within the cellar? As his terror grew, he couldn't stand to go down there at night, but his days were filled with obsessive watching and listening. Finally, he had to decide, would he sell the house and leave the door behind, along with the only legacy of his family? Or would he face his fears and try, beyond all probability, to open that door? He had to try Though it horrified him, he had to try and open that ancient door, and if all his efforts proved unfruitful as it had with his father, he would then sell everything and start anew somewhere else. But what could he try that his father hadn't tried? After some research, he hit upon using acid to dissolve that ancient iron. Aqua regia, a corrosive blend of Nitric and hydrochloric acid heat the metal first with a torch, layer on the plastic suit and gloves, and saturate that lock with the acid mixture. It took him all day, and the smoke and acrid fumes told him 
it was doing its work, but at the end of the day, the door still held. Finally, exhausted, he made his way up to the bedroom and passed out. It was some time in the middle of the night that he heard a clang and the creak of a hinge. The door had popped free. It was time. He didn't want to think, didn't want to allow himself time to let the dread set in. So he was up immediately, armed with a flashlight and a baseball bat and still in his pajamas. He shivered his way down the dank and dreary stairs into the cellar, a frigid frisson of air flowing through him. The barred door was indeed a jar open just enough for him to squeeze through into the cobweb-filled hallway beyond. His footfalls echoed back at him from the hard stone walls, and he imagined he could hear something else adding to the sound. He froze, listening, listening. But when he stopped, the sound stopped as well. He imagined a muted luminosity ahead, but when he got to the bend in the corridor and turned out his flashlight for a moment, there was no light ahead at all. Just ahead, the corridor opened into a larger space. He edged carefully into the room, and as soon as he did, he thought he heard the creak of hinges back behind him. But once again, when he froze to listen, he was bathed in absolute silence. Over the next few moments, he examined the room carefully, but found that it was completely barren. No breaks, no secret passages, no hooks hanging from the ceiling, nothing. Just a large, empty room. When his wife and son came to check on him two weeks later, they found him on his back in the center of the room, cold and hard as the stone that surrounded him. Some said it must have been some dark evil, while Others suggested it was simply the disappointment of finding that his lifelong obsession led to nothing at all. Either way, the cause of death was officially registered as unknown. Eventually, his wife and son Adam settled back into the house. But there was something that disturbed Adam about that barred door now frozen in an open position. And by the time he was 16, he began to obsessively dread what might happen if that door was ever closed. <laughs>